Welcome friends, Petrina here with Homegrown Florida. Are you a beginner gardener eager to embark on a journey of growing your own tomatoes from seed? Well, look no further. In this video, I'm gonna guide you step by step through the process, equipping you with all the knowledge and skills to cultivate a healthy, thriving tomato plant. It's gonna start from selecting the right tomato varieties, to nurturing your seedlings, and caring for mature plants. I've got you covered. Let's jump right into it. Tomatoes come in a wide array of varieties, each with their own unique flavor, shape, color, and growing habit. As a beginner, it's essential to select varieties that are forgiving, <laughs> resilient, and very well suited for your client, climate, especially for hot and humid climates like down here in the south where I live, which is in Florida. So first, let's talk about the two types of tomato varieties that you can grow. First one is determinate tomato varieties also known as bush tomatoes. They have a compact growing habit and a predetermined size. They're only gonna get so tall. These varieties tend to grow to the height of about three to four feet, and then they stop growing. Some are even smaller. They're more bushy and compact um, in appearance, which makes them suitable for smaller gardens, containers, or areas with limited space. One of the key advantages of growing a determinate tomato is their ability to set fruit and then they ripen within a very short period of time or all at once, which is usually in just a couple of weeks. This characteristic makes them an excellent choice for gardeners who want a concentrated harvest for things like canning or preserving. Since the fruiting period is shorter, determinate varieties are also suitable for regions with shorter growing seasons. Patio tomato varieties, also known as container or dwarf tomatoes, are a type of determinate tomato that are specifically bred to thrive in small spaces like patios, balconies, or even indoor hydroponic gardens. These compact plants are ideal for gardeners with limited space or those who want to grow tomatoes in containers. They typically reach heights of about one to three feet, allowing them to thrive in small spaces. Despite their small size, patio tomatoes are known for their abundant fruit production. They can yield a generous harvest of very tasty tomatoes, ensuring that you have a rewarding experience when you're container gardening. Many patio tomato varieties are early maturing, meaning that they produce ripe fruits relatively quickly compared to other tomato varieties. This trait allows gardeners to enjoy homegrown tomatoes earlier in the season. Tomato breeders often incorporate disease resistance into patio tomato varieties as well to ensure successful cultivation, especially in confined spaces where airflow may be limited. This resistance helps protect the plants from common tomato diseases. Now, indeterminate tomato varieties are known for their vining or climbing growth habits. These varieties continue to grow and produce new foliage, flowers, and fruit throughout the entire growing season until they are stopped by either frost or other adverse conditions. They can reach heights of six to 10 feet tall, depending on the variety and growing conditions. Indeterminate tomatoes require sturdy supports such as stakes, trellises or very tall cages. These prevent them from sprawling vines or sagging and breaking uh, the branches under the weight of the fruit. Supporting the plants also helps improve the air circulation, which reduces the risk of disease and makes harvesting, of course, very easy. <laughs> One of the main advantages of indeterminate tomato is their prolonged fruiting period, allowing for a continual harvest throughout the growing season. This makes them really popular among gardeners who enjoy a steady supply of fresh tomatoes for salads, sandwiches, or other recipes. It's important to note that determinate and indeterminate varieties differ not only in their growing habit, but also in their fruit production. 
So determinate tomatoes tend to set and ripen fruit over a very short period of time, while indeterminate produce fruit continuously, um, but in a smaller uh, volume. The new fruit developing as the older fruit is being harvested. So when choosing determinant and indeterminate varieties, consider factors such as your available space, your desired harvest period, and then of course any personal preferences you have of the type of tomatoes. Some gardeners, including myself, opt for a mix of both types to enjoy both benefits of a concentrated harvest as well as continued fresh production. Now that we know the two different varieties, let's talk about the varieties that do well in our climate. I have grown a lot of these in my own garden and I can attest to how well suited they are for Florida's hot and humid climate, although they are gonna work for a lot of our Southern states. Everglade and red currant tomatoes are indeterminate varieties that have high, high heat tolerance, highest of any other tomato. These tomatoes are tall, semi-vining plants that can get a bit wild on you. They produce these very, very little tiny sized uh, fruits and they have a very tangy flavor, making them ideal for salads, snacking, and even things like bruschetta. For a more normal sized cherry or grape tomato, try Super Sweet 100, Sun Glow, red or yellow pear, and there's a whole host of um, many more. You'll have the best luck growing these sized tomatoes since they do ripen faster and normally they have a shorter day to harvest. Florida is known for being able to grow a ton of cherry sized tomatoes, so you can really get creative with this variety in this size. Four determinant style medium sized tomatoes that I love are Florade, Homestead, Heatmaster, and Neptune. These varieties are well adapted to Florida climates and is particularly resistant to diseases commonly found in humid, uh, in humid regions, such as therium wilt. They produce large, meaty fruit with a rich classic tomato flavor that are known for their ability to withstand hot and humid conditions while still delivering a really big harvest. Amelia is an indeterminate variety that is a medium-sized tomato. Amelia adapts well to Florida's heat and humidity. It grows very tall, so be prepared for that with a very strong trellis. Amelia produces a large, smooth, and juicy tomato with a sweet and tangy taste. Sorry guys, it has been raining off and on all day and it is really hard to try to do that video when it comes on and off every five minutes. So I had to move inside away from the tomato plant. Uh, forgive the intrusion. If you want to try growing a beefsteak tomato, try Cherokee Purple, Mortgage Lifter, or Better Boy. Beefsteak tomatoes can be challenging in Florida for many reasons, like pest pressure, splitting from excessive rainfall, and rainfall, and fungal disease from all this humidity. So you will have your best luck growing these during spring when we are in our drought season. Some popular patio tomato varieties you might want to try are Patio Princess, Tiny Tim, Bush Steak, and Better Bush. These varieties have been specifically bred to excel in container gardening, and they're going to deliver an excellent yield as well as flavor. Once you have your variety chosen, now it's time to plant them. I think it's important to discuss when is the best time to start tomatoes down here in Florida. Most of the traditional schedules that you find online are not correct for us here. And the reason for that is we grow all winter long, unlike our northern neighbors and their graphs and displays, visual displays, don't really work. So a lot of the time they indicate for us to start much too late and a lot of the times they completely ignore fall tomatoes. The best time to start tomatoes from seed is August and February. You could probably start even a month before that, but your plants will be in pots a bit longer than they normally like. You could also start a month later, but I strongly recommend you pick varieties that are pretty quick to harvest and preferably small in size. You will have the best luck with these. I have two ways I use to germinate seeds. The first is in tray. It's probably a little more traditional. So you select a container with good drainage, such as a seed tray, small pots, Solo cups are good picks too, but make sure to poke holes in the bottom for drainage. Next, you need some seed starting mix. You can buy a seed starting mix or you can use mine, um, which I'll add to the end of this video. Get the seed starting mix moist before you put it in the tray. So then you fill the containers with the seed starting mix and you leave a little gap at the top for watering. 
Either lightly tap the container to settle the soil or gently press the soil down into the trays to eliminate any kind of air pockets. Make a small indentation in the soil using your fingertip or the back of a pen. The depth should be approximately the same size as the seed's diameter. So place one or two tomato seeds into each indentation and then cover the seeds with a thin layer of the seed starting mix and ensure that they are evenly and lightly covered. Since you are pre-moistening the seed starting mix, you only need to spritz the top of the tray with water to get that top layer moist. For the first couple days, use a spray bottle or a fine mist setting on your watering can to avoid you know, displacing the seeds. Once the seeds break the soil, start watering the container from the bottom by placing them in a tray with water. This allows the soil to absorb moisture without disturbing the seeds. Ensure the soil remains consistently moist, but not like waterlogged. <laughs> Excessive moisture can lead to seed rot or dampening off disease. Tomato seeds require warmth for optimal germination, ideally around 70 to 80 degrees. I've actually never had a time that germination fails due to cold down here. <laughs> it's not really cold, but I have had them fail for too high of temperatures. You can usually start these outside with no problem. If you are starting them in August, place the trays in shade to reduce the temperature. There's no need to use the humidity dome that time of year since we have such humid conditions. But if you are planting in February, put them out in a sunny spot and you might want to use the dome if it's dry or a bit cold at night. If you decide to start them indoors, you possibly need a heat mat or set them close to a window which will provide some warmth. You will also need the humidity dome since our AC usually dries up our houses. Once again, this normally isn't a problem for us down here in Florida. As the seedlings emerge from the soil, remove any covering to promote air circulation and prevent excessive humidity. At this point, you need to give your seedlings a lot of light. Do not wait. They will quickly get leggy trying to stretch towards the light and this makes them fragile and usually they will die. If you have them in a shaded spot outside, move them to a sunnier location. If you are growing them inside, either move them outside or add grow lights about one to three inches above the seedlings. The second way I like to start my tomato seeds is in my Aero Garden indoor hydroponic system. It is so much easier and requires absolutely nothing from you once you have them planted. I have the Grow Anything kit from Aero Garden that lets me use any seed I want to plant in their grow pods. I place the seeds in the pods, drop them into the basket, and then into the system. Lower the light, add water and nutrients, and add the humidity domes to them. Once they sprout, remove the domes, and then you just wait for them to get bigger for transplant. It is really that simple. Now your tomato seeds are on their way to becoming seedlings. In a few weeks, you'll be ready to transplant those seedlings into larger containers or right out into the garden. Depending on which planting method you used will depend on how much maintenance they will need. If you planted them in the traditional way, you want to make sure you are watering them whenever they start to dry out. You will need to provide some nutrients to the seedlings since the seed starting mix really doesn't have much. I like to use fish fertilizer from Neptune's Harvest. I water them with this fertilizer about every week or two. Try to keep the seedlings from getting too much rain since the extra water will wash out the nutrients and may encourage disease. If you started your seeds in an aero garden, you don't have to worry about any of that. <laughs> this system will do all that for you. It will flash a light if it needs nutrients or water. It's just so easy. <laughs> the next thing you will need to do is thin out your seedlings. This is crucial to preventing overcrowding and allowing each plant ample space to thrive. Guys, I know it's hard to kill baby plants, but if you don't do this, you are ensuring that the plants will struggle for the rest of their life and produce a lot less. So all you have to do is pick your favorite. <laughs> Use scissors to gently cut one at the base. Don't try to pluck them out. You could disrupt the root system of the one that is you're leaving behind or is remaining. If you're starting your seedlings indoor or in the aero garden before our precious seedlings venture out into the great outdoors, they must be gradually acclimated to the outside conditions through a process known as hardening off. So begin by placing the seedlings outside in a sheltered area for a few hours each day. This is a good time to start potting them up if you are starting in a smaller container or in the aero garden. You'll probably need to do this for any plants you start outside too if you didn't start them in bigger containers like a solo cup. 
So you gently remove the seedling from the tray or the arrow garden and you place them in a larger container with moist potting soil, not seed starting mix. So you dig the hole slightly deeper than what the seedling's root ball is and you gently remove the seedling from the container and place them in the hole and you backfill the hole with soil and then firmly press it into the base of the plant. Water the transplant seedlings thoroughly to settle that soil and remove any air pockets. It's important that if you are moving them out of the aero garden that you keep them really moist since they are getting used to moving from growing in water to soil. Keep them in shade during the up potting process. Direct sunlight and heat can really hurt them at this stage. After a week of this gradual transition, move them out to a sunny location for a week to see how they handle that. If they're showing signs of stress, just move them back to a shady spot to give them a little more time. Once your seedlings are doing well in full sun and about six inches tall, you can make the move to their permanent location, either in ground, raised bed, or a very large container. When you're ready for their permanent move, make sure you're completely free from any frost. This is more of an issue for North and Central Florida rather than South Florida. So select a location that has at least six hours of sun, preferably morning sun with afternoon shade. When you transplant them into their permanent spot, you will repeat the same process you did when you were potting them up with the only difference being that you want to place the plants as deeply as you can. Tomatoes are one of those rare plants that grow roots all along their stem. So burying them deeply will encourage a stronger plant. Bury them up to their first set of leaves if you can. When you place the plant in the hole, add some granular fertilizer like tomato tome from Epsoma into the planting hole and mix it with native soil. This should help keep them fed for the first few weeks. Once our tomato plants are comfortably settled, it's time to provide them with the care and attention they need to thrive. Regular watering is vital to keep the soil evenly moist, especially during hot periods. Mulch heavily around the base of the plant to conserve the moisture and prevent weed growth. Indeterminate tomato varieties known for their sprawling growth habit benefit from that staking and caging or supports that we talked about. You can also do a Florida weave method too if you like. I did this before and it, it works relatively well. Determinants can usually stand on their own, but a tomato cage or stake could be pretty helpful. At this point, some people choose to prune the tomatoes to just one stem for indeterminate varieties. I personally don't do this. I take a more <laughs> wild and crazy approach to pruning my tomatoes. I remove any leaves touching the ground to reduce disease and pretty much all the leaves and branches up to the first set of fruit. After that, I just let them go wild. <laughs> Depending on the bushiness of the variety, this does sometimes cause more fungal issues since the air floor is reduced. But for me, the higher production versus the shorter life of the plant is worth it. If you want to reduce this risk and keep your plants alive longer, try pruning more. Another thing that I like to do to prevent disease is to spray my tomatoes with a mixture of 10 tablespoons hydrogen peroxide and one gallon of water once a week as a preventative. Keep a watch out for pests at this point. Probably the two that impact my plants the worst is stink bugs and the tomato hornworm. I pick them off whenever I see them and either you can destroy them or relocate them. Then you have some larger pests like squirrels, birds, and raccoons. <laughs> Normally these pests are actually just looking for water. So I usually leave a water source somewhere close by for them in hopes that they leave my fruit alone. <laughs> Another thing I like to do is take hair from my brush and my dog's brush and sprinkle it around the plant. Sometimes that helps, the scent of it keeps them away. Make sure to fertilize your tomato plants regularly with a balanced fertilizer to ensure healthy growth and abundant fruit production. I usually add tomato tome once every two months and then some fish fertilizer every couple of weeks. This helps them grow quick and stay pretty healthy. Finally, it's the moment you've been eagerly waiting for, the beautiful, bountiful harvest of ripe juicy tomatoes. <laughs> Determining the perfect time to harvest is a bit of a struggle and it requires kind of good observation and a gentle touch. Depending on the environment conditions, I harvest my tomatoes differently. If I have a challenge with bugs, excessive rain, or an upcoming frost, I will harvest my tomatoes early when they are still green. As long as they have reached full size and the color is moving from a dark green to a light green or that pink. 
If I'm not struggling with any of these concerns, then I wait for the fruit to start to blush and change colors before I harvest them. I almost always harvest my tomatoes before they are fully ripe to reduce the larger pests like squirrels and birds from taking bites out of them. <laughs> but you can definitely try and wait to see if you can get them completely ripened on the vine. Look for fully colored fruits, firm to the touch, but slightly soft when you squeeze them. To harvest, simply twist the tomato gently or use some uh, shears to cut the stem above the plant. All the products I mentioned or showed in this video, I will link down in the description below in case you want to pick these up for your garden. I know that that was a lot of steps, but remember that tomatoes take about three to five months. So each one of these steps are separated by weeks. So even though it sounds like a lot of work, most of the steps only take about 10 minutes. There are a lot of really great reasons for growing your own tomatoes from seed, like lower cost, sweeter taste, interesting varieties that you can't find at the store, and that amazing feeling of accomplishment when you succeed, or just a simple pleasure of getting outside and sticking your hands in the dirt. Whatever your reason, I hope this video was helpful. If you learned something new, head down and give me a thumbs up to let me know. Make sure to check out this video next on how to start tomato seeds in your arrow garden. Happy gardening, guys.